Hey friends, this morning I'm going to be testing out the new pe <laughs> I think she's trying to kill me with tomato cuttings. In any case, this morning I'm going to be testing out the new pH meter and making sure that my pH strips were actually registering correctly. I'll be filling up some more water in the makeup water barrel and adjusting that pH as well. We'll see if we can get this thing under control. I'm busy refilling the makeup water this morning. I'll be taking his temperature and then adjusting the pH. Just one of the things you have to do. Thank you. How many reels are left? That's it. That's the last reel. Well, it's a little dingy today. It's Very partially dingy. yeah, it's partially overcast. Yep. It's about 90 degrees in the greenhouse right now with just the fan blowing, no evaporative cooler going. So that's nice. Irene's busy tying up the tomatoes on the back so that they can be leaned and dropped. And she's busy throwing tomato pieces at me. Yep. As usual, Jack just curls up down by the evaporative cooler and enjoys the cool. He's always on alert. His ears are ready to snap to attention. I'm just going to pick up these tomato trimmings that Irene's been tossing over here. Right about there. We always clean up the pieces that we cut off so that we don't have more insects and more disease. Around here, that's especially important. I now have three days worth of experience adjusting the pH with the pH meter. Now I want to talk about that a little bit because I got fooled by some test strips. Because we live so far away from decent sized towns, I try to have backups for the essential tools we use on the homestead. Sometimes I succeed and sometimes I don't. Well, I had a tool. These test strips are specific for the range of pH to successfully grow hydroponically. It has a low end of 5.5 pH and a high end of 8.0. It has marks every 0.2 on the pH scale, which should be plenty to keep the reservoir in line on an emergency basis. Well, this didn't work. Now, I'm not sure exactly why. The company that I bought these test strips from is no longer offering them. The original owner sold the company, and I can't find out why they stopped selling them. But I know why I won't use them again. One of the things I found out researching these test strips. I couldn't track down the original manufacturer, but pretty much all of these test strips use a special kind of indicating dye. That dye uses the amount of acids that are in the water, or the amount of base that's in the water, to give you an indicator. Now, I don't have perfect color vision by a long shot, 
I see colors differently than other people, I can reasonably match up on this scale. But don't ask me for exactly what the color is because I won't be able to tell you exactly what it is. I know what it is when I see it, but that's it. A few days ago, I started using this digital pH meter. It's not a high-end meter. It's kind of the low end of the range. It's fine. It works. It does a good job. I can calibrate it with calibration fluids. Oh, how interesting. Anyway, I can calibrate it with calibration liquids. So I know that the meter is working correctly. And it does. But what I found out was this meter was reading a pH close to 8 in our makeup barrel. That's just the water that comes from the well that we're using right now. The test strips were showing it in the high sixes. That's a huge difference. That's more than 1.2 on pH scale. That in turn has a big impact on how I would treat this water. What I'm trying to figure out right now is how much buffering is going on because of the calcium that's in the well water that we're getting. I like to use rainwater, but I don't have any right now because we haven't had rain in a large number of months. I have about 700 gallons usually, which is enough to run this small system until the really hot weather, and it's getting hot, so the plants are drinking water like there's no tomorrow. And what I've done is I've adjusted the pH in the makeup tank. The makeup barrel is maintaining the pH just fine, so I know that there's equilibrium in that makeup barrel for pH. The temperature in this barrel stays below 80 degrees. In a future video, I'll describe how we're maintaining the water temperature in the Dutch bucket system below 80 degrees. It's not that difficult, but it's not that simple either. What I'm doing now is measuring the pH in the nutrient tank, and I've been lowering the pH down into the range where I want it for these tomatoes. Right now, I have it reading 6.5, which is the upper end of where I want the pH for tomatoes. I'm going to eventually drop that down to 5.8, but I want to do it in some steps. Taking a pH reading with these meters, as CB would tell you, and he did on several of his shows, you turn it on, put it in the liquid, wait for it to settle down, and take the reading. It's really, really simple. It's really easy. The scale is easy to read, and it's nice knowing what you actually have. I'm trying to figure out some of the chemistry that's going on here in this Dutch bucket system. I don't have easy to work with water. I don't know the exact chemical composition of the water. The last water test I have from the town is from 2008, and since then they've brought another well online. The third well that we use here on the ranch hasn't been tested for mineral content as far as I know, but I'll ask. So that's the short version of where we are right now today. Definitely Irene was right about the management of this water. It wasn't right. It was keeping the calcium from being absorbed by the tomato plants. Well, at least as well as it should be absorbed. Hopefully with this change, we'll start having better uptake and definitely we'll have better production on those paste tomatoes. What we've learned so far with the new pH meter is that the pH test strips were off, way off. My color vision isn't really good. Irene's is excellent, but even so, the test strips were showing a lower pH than what was actually present in that reservoir. So now I can go ahead and start adjusting that pH so that it's more appropriate for these tomatoes. I think that's probably the majority of the issues that we were having with blossom end rot, at least on those paste tomatoes. Now, interesting enough, the Gardener's Delight are just doing well, as is the Amanda Orange. Now, I may have just jinxed it by saying that, but it's looking like I can get this back under control. 
As Irene said in the last episode, she didn't think that the management of the reservoir pH was right. I think she was right. I didn't realize it was off as much as it is. It's great to know. It's a little disappointing that those test strips, which are a narrow range test strip, right around pH 7, aren't working right. I'm not sure why it could be they were exposed to too much temperature. It may be that they're outside of the range. Oh, and there goes a piece of tomato cutting. <laughs> well, thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this. We'll be doing some more pH adjustments over the next day or two. I don't want to have a huge adjustment all at one time because I don't want to shock these plants any more than we've already done. Don't forget to like and subscribe and press the bell button so that you get notifications when we do something new because we're always doing something at least. Thanks for watching. Bye.